Part 2 Upper and Lower Arm Anatomy In this video, you will see how the skeletal and muscle anatomy of the arm influences its constructions and shapes. I will make several quick sketches of the arm in various positions. Let us begin with the frontal view of the arm, in which the arm is slightly bent at the elbow joint. In the supination position that we are drawing right now, these two bones run parallel to each other. In this position, the radius crosses the ulna, forming an X shape. This influences the appearance of the lower arm muscles. Let us make another sketch of the arm. This time, we will draw it from the side. At the shoulder, we have a good view of the deltoid muscle. You can clearly see its triangular shape in all three portions. The frontal portion starts at the collarbone. The side portion starts from the acromion of the shoulder blade. And the back portion starts from the spine of the shoulder blade. This muscle inserts into the approximate middle of the humerus. Again, to realistically depict the arm in such a position, you need to draw these two straight lines, the lines of the ulna and the lines of the radius. Above the radius line in the upper half of the forearm is the mass of the extensor group muscles. In the lower half, the outline of the arm follows the radius bone. Below the ulna line, we can see the curved outline of the flexor group muscles. Closer to the wrist, the arm's outline follows the ulna line direction. The width of the arm at the wrist is defined by the size of the ulna and radius bones. At the lower end of the upper arm, we can see two projections of the upper arm bone. They are called the lateral and medial epicondyles of the humerus. Between these two projections is the tip of the elbow, located at the upper end of the ulna. On the drawing, the ulna travels downward to the side of the wrist closer to the little finger.